Okay, so today we're going to be solving equations with variables on both sides. Um, the first example is going to be 15 minus 2x equals negative 7x. Now, when we're trying to solve these types of equations, um, it's going to look similar with the exception that you see x terms on both sides of the equal sign. So in this case, you're probably thinking, okay, what side am I going to put the x's on? Um, and for this one, I'm going to choose the right side, and I'll tell you in a minute why I'm doing this, but just go with me for now. So that means on this right side is where I'm going to collect all my x's. On the left side is where I want to collect all my variable, um, sorry, all my constant terms or numbers. Now, you notice there's one, two, three terms. All we're going to do is make sure that each one is in the right place. So a little story. Let's assume this is a street and on one side of the street we have all the x's and on the left side of the street is where all the numbers live. So at the end of the day you gotta make sure everyone's in the right place, everyone goes home. So 15 is on the number side, it's a constant term, it's right where it should be. Negative 2x is a variable term, it's an x term, so it's gonna go on this side, that's where it needs to go. And negative 7x is a variable term, it's the x term, it's on the right side. So the only one that's not in the right place is this negative 2x. So this negative 2x, we gotta get it to the right place. And notice it's just one of them. If I would have chosen my x term, I'm sorry, my x terms to be on the left, this wouldn't have been in the right place, and this one wouldn't have been in the right place. So I would have had to do two steps there. So it's best to choose the right side, which is what I did. Now. Let's go ahead and move the one that needs to go. This one needs to go. Now it's not supposed to be here. It's the subtraction of 2x. The only way to get rid of it mathematically is to add 2x. So you add a 2x over here. Let me do that in orange so you can see. So you add 2x to both sides and that will go away. And you're left with negative 5x over here and 15 on this side. So now, that we're trying to get x by itself, that's multiplication of negative 5. So you divide by negative 5. And negative 5 di <coughs> divided by negative 5 is 1. <coughs> and 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. So negative 3 equals x. Now. Um, when we want to check our answers, we do with something called just plugging them in. And I recommend we do what's called plug-in bubbles. I like to call it plug-in bubbles because you create the bubbles first. I'm going to put a plug-in bubble, which is literally just a set of parentheses, wherever I see the variable what was. So this is my x term. I'm sorry, an x here and an x variable here. That's where they should go. So now that I know that my answer was negative 3, I plug them into the plug-in bubbles and I check to see if it works. So I'm hoping that this side does equal this side. So order of operations, you multiply first. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 and negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. And if I add these together I get 21 on the left and 21 on the right, so yes, it checks my answer is correct. So this is what you do when you want to check your answer, you just take the solution, replace it with the x in the problem, and check if the left and the right side match, um, or equal. So now let's do the next example. This one's going to have a couple more terms in it. 15 plus 3x equals 12 plus 7x. Okay, so now, with this one, I notice there's four terms. So when it comes time to choose which side is the best side to keep your x's, it won't really matter, because you're going to move two anyway, regardless of which side you choose. So, because it's usual practice to keep the x on the left, we'll start with that. Okay, now, again, I'm choosing x to be on this side this time. And it doesn't matter, sometimes it's left, sometimes it's the right side. Just be consistent with your labels. This is a number term. It should be here. That one's in the wrong place. This is an x term. It's in the right place. This is a number term. It should be on the left side. No, sorry. It's on the correct place. 
and 7x is a variable term which should be in the left side. So the only ones that are out of place is this 15, should be here, and this 7x should be over there. So there's two things that need to go away and go to the right place. So the first one I'm going to get rid of is the 15. It's a positive 15. The only way to get rid of it is if I put a negative 15. What you do to one side, you must do to the other to keep the equation balanced. And so then, the light's there. There you go. Um, this is zero. And I gotta total that up now, and I get negative three. The other one that was in the wrong place was this seven X. It should be on this side. So to get rid of it over here, it's addition, so now we subtract seven X. Subtract seven X. Now that's gone. And on this side, we're left with negative 4x. All right, so out of the four terms, this one was the only one in the wrong place, got rid of it. This one was in the wrong place, got rid of it. In turn, when you're trying to get rid of this, it ends up here. When you're trying to get rid of this 15, negative ends up here. Now we're left with a one-step equation, opposite of multiplying by negative 4, is dividing by negative 4 on both sides. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is an invisible 1x. And on the right side, ne negative divided by negative is a positive 3 fourths. And if you want, you can leave it as 0.75 if you know the decimal equivalent. Those are your answers, this one or this one, either or. And again, if you wanted to check this, you would plug this into the x terms here and x term here. Now, something with some parentheses, example three, negative three times x minus four equals two times five minus x. Now, on this one again, I noticed that there's the same amount of terms here and here, and you'll see after the distributive property. Um, First thing is to get rid of the parentheses, and to do that, you distribute. When you distribute, you will no longer use parentheses, and it'll look a lot simpler. Um, negative three times x is negative three x. And negative three times negative four is positive 12. Here I have two times five is 10, and two times negative x is negative two x. So that is my new simpler equation and to solve this now we're trying to collect our x's on the same side and I chose the left side again there's two here and two here so there will be two movements regardless so it doesn't matter what side you choose so which one's in the wrong place think about it x negative 3x is in the correct side no problem there 12 is a number term, it should be over here. That one's gonna have to go. 10 is a number term, it's in the correct place. And negative two x is an x term, it should be on this side. So two of them are in the wrong place. This 12 and this negative two x. Those are the only two operations we're gonna reverse. Do the inverse operation of adding 12 to get rid of it here. You wanna put it over here with the other like terms. You don't wanna combine it with something that's not like terms. Now it's gone. This one is in the wrong place. I gotta get rid of that one. Opposite of subtracting two is adding two. And now it's gone. It ends up on this side. Remember, you gotta do the same thing to both sides to keep that equation balanced. So this is nothing, that's nothing. Now what do I, my totals. All my x's now. Everyone's on the left side. Everyone's home. Negative three plus two is negative x. And on this side, we had our number terms. We add them up and you get negative two. So again, you get rid of the ones that are in the wrong place, inverse operations to both sides, and you total up what's left, total up what's left over on each side, and you're almost there. This is multiplication of an invisible negative one. And in order to get rid of that invisible negative one, you think of it as being multiplied, so we're going to divide. 
Negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives me positive 1x. And negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So x equals 2. Again, 2 minus 4 times negative 3. And 5 minus 2, all of that multiplied by 2. I know the answer is right. You check them, it'll give you the right answer. And that's how you verify you did it right. And the last problem. Negative 2 times x minus 5 equals 6 times 2 minus 1 half x. Now, again, parentheses, you want to eliminate those parentheses and get rid of them before you start solving this. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. 6 times 2 oops, is 12 and 6 times a half x. Now for this one you can think of this as 1 half times 6 because I like to say 1 half of 6. Of means multiply. So what's 1 half of 6? Same thing as 6 times a half. And I know that half of 6 is 3 but that's negative so it's negative 3x. Um, if you're not sure what I did, you can always do regular multiplication, right? 6 times 1 half. Put a 1 under the 6, so it looks like a fraction. Multiply straight across, and you get 6 over 2, which is still 3. And I didn't put the negative there, but that would make it negative 3, okay? So, again, multiplying, you can use the word of if it makes sense to you. Next one. Now I can't do anything here. This is as simple as it gets. This is as simple as it gets, so now I'm ready to solve by collecting my terms on the same side. Because there's two on each side, it won't make a difference. There will be two movements done anyway, so this is how we're going to collect them. Of the four, I want you to think about which ones are in the wrong place. Which ones are we going to have to get rid of? Were you thinking this 10, right? Because it's got to go to the number side. And this 3x term has to go to the x side. Those are the two that are in the wrong place. This guy's okay. This one's got to go. So we're going to subtract 10. And I'm just alternating colors so you can see the steps. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. Again, I don't want to put the 10 over here because that's an x term. They're not like terms. you got to put the 10 with the like term, which is another number. And this guy has got to go. Opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. So... 3x and positive 3x. So this is 0. What you do to one side, you must do to the other one. Got rid of the ones that were in the wrong place. In turn, we did the inverse operation to both sides. Now we total up all of our numbers on the number side, all of our x's on the x side. You're left with a positive 1x. And on this side, you're left with 2. And we are actually finished because this imaginary one is exactly what we wanted. And that's your answer. And again, checking your answers, you would take this to plug it here, take this to plug it here, and it should work out. And that's how you confirm that you did it right. And that's how you solve equations with variables on both sides.